Dave Damashek sitting in for Rich Eisen. He's a better Jewish person than I am, apparently, because here Probably I am behind the desk. We have much to get to. Jonah Carey from CBS. We're going to talk about what's been an exciting postseason in MLB. As we said at the top, it's the most wonderful time of the year for a sports fan. The puck drops, football, college and pro, baseball, so on and so forth. And the time is great for me because look who's seated to my immediate right. One of my favorite co-workers over there from the NFL Network, star of the 49ers, a Panther later in his career there, clutch as it gets in the postseason. It's Eric Davis. What's the poop, fella? Jack, what's happening? How are we, Ed? I, we are well. We are well. I have a lot of things to talk Do about. Do you? Well, we have a lot to get through. We have to talk <laughs> Dak v. Romo. Okay. We have to talk about what's going on with uh, one of your former teams, the Panthers. Okay. Who could possibly beat the Patriots? But let's start off with those 49ers. Okay. Colin Kaepernick, what do, what do you expect from him now? Uh, well, I, I still want to see him progress. What has he done? I mean, he, I, I, Cap's whole thing was just getting better in the pocket. That understanding how to read defenses, understanding how to read the windows and the timing of an NFL offense and and, and how to get inside of defenses and into the gaps. That's been his issue. You've always they've always had to roll the pocket, move him one way or the other to shrink shrink the field. Can he stand in the pocket and read the entire field? He has an arm. He has the physical tools but it's about the pace of the game and him doing it. So I still, he it hasn't been on the field. No one gets better on the sideline. Mm -hmm. You can learn, you can get a grasp of the playbook, you can you can get a little bit more comfortable with the verbiage and, and learn the language of the new coach, but you don't get better until you get on the field. So I don't expect him to be great starting out, but I would like to see him grow. I knew he was gonna get on the field, I've been saying it's day one, it's Blaine Gabbert. Well, the casual, the, field? the casual football GM, the uh, the amateur GMs out there have always said since Chip Kelly, even before Chip Kelly decided to go to the NFL, you know who would be perfect for Chip Kelly? Colin Kaepernick. Well, now we're going to see whether or not yeah. that's true. And Blaine Gabbert was fine. He wasn't yeah. atrocious, but he wasn't a world beater either. You know, Gabbert can run, but Kaepernick can run. Yeah. I, I, you know, I hearken back, what was that, 2011, when he first made the scene? And not unlike, I guess, seeing Vince Young with Texas play against Michigan in, in the Rose Bowl a number of years ago, it had a quality to Kaepernick when he was playing in candlestick against the, the Packers in the postseason. Yeah. Running away from guys, sort of gliding away from it. I, I remember thinking in that moment, Oh well, football will never be the same. I mean that. I remember and thinking, now, and now where are no, we? No, I don't know. I remember thinking in that moment that that the um, the Packers are really playing bad on defense. <laughs> I, I remember thinking it. I was calling that game, and I was like, "That this is just horrible." The way that they were hmm. playing, not defending the edge whatsoever. They had no clue, and it, which is so unlike Dom Capers in his defenses. I played for him. They had no clue what to do. That's what I remember thinking. Like they have not practiced this play at all. I remember thinking that. But with Cap coming out right now. I'm, I'm another guy who thought that Cap before, when Chip Kelly was up in Philly, I was like, that he should go there. That would be a good place because he needed to get out of those colors. He needed to get out of the 49ers colors. He didn't have any, he didn't have any friends in the locker room. Mm -hmm. I actually think now, after his stance, he's opened some conversations in the locker room. I think guys view him differently now. I think they thought he had gone all Hollywood and the guys didn't like him. I think they view him differently. Because it's okay to be Hollywood if, you, if you're performing. If you're not performing, cats don't like it. I think now they see him differently. I think he's had some conversations. So I actually think, I, as I said, I thought Chip Kelly's offense could be a good place for him. And I actually think he may now be more comfortable being the quarterback for the 49ers. He didn't want to be there. Because there was no, he had no support. He may actually have some support now. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what happens. I think Carlos Hyde uh, benefits as a result of this. Maybe Torrey Smith. We'll see what happens. That's a one-win team. So let's move off of them and look at uh, the Carolina Panthers, the mm -hmm. reigning NFC champs. Yeah. They're one in four, man. Yeah, they are. <laughs> and a lot of it has to do offensively. Um, looking at, I thought, I thought uh, Cam was was going to be better. I thought Cam, and by I know he was the MVP of the league last year, but going into the season, going into the offseason, I, I I thought he could repeat as MVP. Why? Because his game could get so much better. Mm -hmm. His accuracy could get so much better. His footwork could get so much better. 
Uh, his, his ability to place the ball where he wanted to do it, where he wants to place it, could get better if he worked on the lower end of his game. He, he has to get his feet connected with his arm, and when he doesn't, it throws things off. And I think a, a part of that, and the expectation of some of these guys to do what they did, like Teddy Ginn. Teddy Ginn had a career year. I like Teddy, but we've seen Teddy look catch-challenged from time to time throughout <laughs> his career. He caught everything last year. You get Benjamin back, but so you have to expect some of those things to happen. You made the moves on defense. You got a young guys playing. Young guys are playing like young guys at the corner position for him. So a lot of things have changed for that defense where it was just to punch you in the face and just snuff everything out. It's not that way. Uh, and then you had a Carolina offense that, you know, they averaged, what, 30 or 32 points or something like that last year. How many of those points came off of turnovers, short fields, pick sixes? All of those things, you know, they things, disappear. I hear you. Things have to go your way in yeah. one of those special seasons when you're 15 and one kind of yes. kind of season. Yes. I get it, but this regression is stunning. The thing they have going for them is they're in the NFC South. I suspect they have a chance if the Falcons can fall back a little bit for them. They're in Seattle this week, but the difference between the 2016 Falcons and last year's gang that started out well too is. They just beat the Panthers in Atlanta, and now they went into Denver and knocked them off. Do you buy uh, well, Matt Ryan's Falcons this year? Uh, I, the Falcons, yeah, I because I, well, they can score. I mean, that's the thing about it. The, the question with the Falcons is always, are they tough enough? Mm. You know, it, go, it goes all the way back to where Arthur Blank called out his guys and said, "I we need to get tougher. That's why you wouldn't got the coach that you got, because you're trying to get tougher. They still... At the end of the day, when it comes down to just the fight in the trenches, are they strong enough and stout enough and they're trying to get there? They can always score the pretty ball. They can throw the long ball. You know, as long as you got Julio and Matt Ryan, you're going to be able to do that. And them beating the, the Panthers going to Atlanta, even when I was there on the good teams, that's always, always a tough one. It, it's that regional game that's a tough one. So the Panthers losing that one. I, the Panthers still have a shot. I didn't expect them to win that one. But even last year when they were undefeated, I said they were going to lose that game. And that's the one they lost. That's that's just a tough game. From from the owner down, everybody wants that game. I think that you just get mm -hmm. so – it gets so intense that week of practice that things go wrong. The Falcons right now – I'm watching Julio. Julio's a bad boy. He's, a, he's an avatar, man. He's a freaking avatar. It's, he's not your number one, though, it, is he? It's uh, Julio – yeah. Um. I, I, he's. It's hard, man. I like AB. I really like AB. But Julio just. Julio is as quick as AB. He's as fast as AB, uh, and he's trapped in that six three two twenty five body. I who mean, would you not want to defend? What's that? Who would you Who would you rather face in a matchup? Is what I'm saying. Like, who's number two? One two. The guys who, opposite of you, and you're like, I'd rather be taking the other one. That I don't care. Well, I know you're competitive, but no, which but I one? Don't care. I love it. That's it, the right answer. I, I don't care. It's just it's a different way you play the guys. It, it, Julio, Julio's a big guy. So a big guy. It, number one, he's so big I can't miss him. So if I want to jam him, I, it, look, I, like I said, it, it's six three, you know, two hundred twenty five pounds of man. I can't miss him. A B is another. So you have to understand what, what routes combinations they want, and, and, and are you strong enough to wrestle with a guy like Julio? A.B. is a guy that you want to get your hands on, if possible, because he's a smaller guy. So you want to you want to be patient, get your hands on him. You can move him around a lot more, but now don't underestimate how strong A.B. is. That's part of the reason why he's so good, because you see this small body, and guys don't realize just how strong and powerful he is. So that's why he's able to make plays. But it's just, it's, a, it, it's just like... You use a certain skill set to cover certain guys. You know, you wouldn't do the same thing with a tight end that you would do with A.B. You, you wouldn't cover Gronk the way you cover those guys. You're hearing the voice of Eric Davis from the NFL Network and formerly the guy who would lock up with one number 88, the playmaker, Michael Irvin, in big-time yeah. postseason games. What about you just talk about getting up for games as a team? We, we were talking earlier the Chargers season as it's unfolding here. At some point, does a locker room – reach a place where they say, well, you know what? The football gods are just down on us this year. We're, we're, we, we can't win even when we're in good shape. We're cursed. Does, is that something that can insinuate an entire team? You can. You, bless you over there, man. Thank you. You're welcome. You <laughs> okay? I turned my mic off. Yeah, you, that was loud. No, 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 but I'm, that was that – was, 
pretty sinister. Allergies. You, you, you good? <laughs> I'm good. Okay. All right. Uh, you know, you reach a point to where I'm sorry you had to deal with that. No, 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 no. I, I'm, 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 I'm I mean, allergic I'm... to talk of the San Diego Chargers. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it is. That's what it is. You, it seems like they're allergic to winning. I'm right embarrassed now. for Chris. I mean, that's you. You start losing games, and you reach a point when things start to get tough in a game where it's here we go again. You can, you know, teams can play just hard enough to lose. And yes, you you can. It's not that you feel cursed. You, the expectations start to you, know, you, it, it, you go from hoping that you can win to expecting to lose because it has happened so much. And uh, people will say, how can pros do that? Yes, you're competitive. Yes, you want to go out there. But it's the same thing teams that win. When you're winning, you feel like you will always find a way to come out on top. The Patriots feel like they're going to win. Pittsburgh feels like they're going to win. The Falcons right now, they feel like they will find a way to win the game no matter what, even if it's close. That's what starts to happen. When you you start to lose the way, they have invented ways that we've never seen. Well, it, it, it really is a fascinating thing. The human element of pro sports, and the, like I say, the more we go into advanced numbers and yep. everything else and turn it into a math equation, the further we get from the reality of, you were there with Steve Young, taking over for number 16, a lot of pressure there, and then you you don't win your first postseason game, and those, those things start to mount up, and how that affects uh, your psyche yeah. going forward is fascinating stuff with me. Fascinating stuff overall here with NFL Network's uh, Eric Davis. That's why he's coming back for yet another segment. Looking for, looking forward to that. Dak, Romo, whatever else you want, hit us up <laughs> with your question. 844-204-7424 or hit up the Rich Eisen Show app and we will answer it. Dave Damashek in for Rich Eisen on the Rich Eisen Show. Eric Davis from the NFL Network in here right now. Jonah Carey coming up from CBS Sports to talk a little uh, MLB postseason. And then Jim Ross, the Hall of Famer from the world of wrestling in uh, hour number three. Looking forward to all that. ED, we were just talking about, and let's connect the dots here as it pertains to Clayton Kershaw's performance in Dodger Stadium. You also, another lefty, a guy named Steve Young, took over for Joe Montana. And you know we can we can look at the numbers and how these and 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 how that bears out reality. But if you're Clayton Kershaw or if you're Steve Young and you struggle your first couple of go rounds in the big time in the postseason, on a human level that has to be in your head. You think about that, Steve Young. You were on the team with him back uh, when you guys finally got over the hump in '94. But leading up to that, Montana was out. Young was in. Young had to be considering like I can't blow this one I got to do it for to prove I'm as good as Montana right um from a I mean just from a human standpoint you, I, you you're going to think about it I, you know he's not a robot neither one of those guys are robots so of course you're going to think about it uh but also understand that these guys are so talented that and and they have remember this not the first time that they've been you know, with the, been there with the spotlight on them either of the guys so you, you are accustomed to being under that pressure and you are expecting to succeed because you always have. Mm -hmm. So you know that it's going to happen. You're frustrated that it hasn't happened yet. Of course you understand and you hear people say, as much as you say you don't hear it, you don't read it, you don't think about it, yes, you're gonna hear people say, okay, will it be this time? You know, can't, he's not as good, he hasn't done this until he accomplishes this. People are going to view but a certain human way. beings. Well, people like me. I mean, there uh, there are myriad reasons why Dave Damashek is uh, isn't a play isn't uh, in the pros at least I can't anymore. Think of one. Well, I mean, my 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 time as a uh, two sport uh, professional. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't want to live life in the rear view mirror. Yeah, I want to look ahead here. But when Clayton Kershaw gets out on the mound here, mm -hmm. when Tony Romo takes over, and especially assuming he does take over for Dak Prescott, we can talk about whether or not that's going to happen. Romo finds himself in a tight game late when he goes out onto the field that has to occur to him people are going to talk about this if i blow this again I, no i don't think i don't really think you don't about, think not, people not think in, that way not in that moment he's thinking about winning because he's also been in tight games and won sure okay so well what about Ker well so, so let's look at it. kershaw kershaw can go out there and he has to know for all my great deeds if over 162 games in summer times the thing that plagues me to this point in my career is not dominating when it matters most. Doesn't that when he hits the hump in his next game, maybe it'll be in the NLCS, maybe it'll have to be next year. Isn't that rattling around in his brain? I don't think so. Like I said, you hear it and you understand that you're going to be judged. When you when you start playing at the level 
that you, you know a Kershaw is playing at, you know that you're that the standard that you're being judged by is the best. So you're thinking that until you get that done, then you haven't really reached the pinnacle. And that's so you think about it. But once he goes out, like I said, this guy's not, he's accustomed to having the pressure. He's accustomed to walking out with all the eyes on him saying, okay, you have to give. There's the point where they only won when he, when he had the rock in his hand. So you're thinking about that. But now you go out with the expectations of succeeding. He's, he's not out there worrying about failing. Hmm. He's not expecting to fail. I'll you trust would, you. I take your word for it. I just think they're human beings ultimately. Part of the reason of all the pro athletes I've talked to, the one thing that seems to come through always is there is a great deal of self-confidence. Some yes. guys are arrogant, but everybody who reaches the pros, one aspect of their frame yes. of mind or what, what their makeup is, they know they're great. Yes, and the other part of it that you to play at that level and especially to be a Kershaw or to be a Romo or, or a Steve Young, you have to be able to compartmentalize. And that's the part of it that people are like, okay, you hear it, you heard it, but it's over there. Right now it has nothing to do with what, I, what the focus that I'm going to play with. Well, that's what I'm saying. Once, once you go off into that mode, you're not thinking about the what ifs. You're just doing what you do. And you're just hoping that you're dealing that day and you're feeling it. Uh, and, and you make your adjustments and you compete within that moment you're not worried about the white noise from the outside because you can't do anything about it all right lay it on me now like we say you saw montana give way to young we've all seen drew bledsoe be replaced by tom yeah. brady america's team is riding high right now with the rookie number four dak prescott jerry says it's gonna be romo when romo's ready to go is this the right choice eric davis it's the right choice um well i Last season, but so before before we even drafted Dak Prescott, I'm on record saying that they need a new quarterback. Romo's broken. You need a new quarterback. I'm going to stick to that. And I'm on. I've already said I think that next year, you start the season with Dak Prescott. Hmm. That's what I think they're going to do. So now let's talk about right now. Do you bring back Tony Romo? A healthy Tony Romo, a fully healthy Tony Romo is better than Dak. He's better. You you have more to your offense. Dak Prescott and what they're asking him to do, he's doing it very well. Can at, I, I, I let me play Devil's Damashek? This rookie is doing it without Des Bryant. That's the thing I feel like in these last couple of games, he's still winning, and he doesn't have his one viable pass catcher out there. Um, he's he's Beasley's catching balls. He's all right, yeah, but people, I mean, people keep saying he's all right. What is it? Because he's a little white guy. Beasley's good. No, Terrence Williams is less than all right. <laughs> Be Beasley, Beasley, Eric. The thing Beasley, about me is I don't see color. Beasley, Beasley. You know what? <laughs> okay, Beasley is out there making plays, and that's all you need. I know Dez is not out there. When Dez comes back, he can do this. I like what I like that. You just you just heard me say I think mm -hmm. they found a quarterback and he, and he's their starter moving forward. But Dak Prescott right now as a rookie is not as good as Tony Romo when he's healthy. So if your team is dealing, if you think you can get more out of your offense, because if I see Dak continue to progress within the offense, start throwing the ball down the field more, start doing more things, and maybe – with a healthy Dez, you can do that. Um, okay, you leave him. The reason you would bring Tony Romo back is because you get the rest of your playbook back. Once you hit the playoffs, and it may start happening before that, once teams start to say, well, okay, this guy doesn't throw the ball down the field. It's like any other quarterback. You're going to sit there and you're just mm -hmm. going to start crowding the line of scrimmage and we're going to, you're, okay, we're not going to let him run. It's the Colin Kaepernick thing. We're not going to let him run. We're going to make him have to throw the ball down the field, which he has shown that he's not really doing all the time. So now what? What's next? And and see if you can make those adjustments. And if not, then you get yourself in a situation to where with the limited offense, you're trying to roll the field right or left to shrink his reads and things like that. It changes. For the casual football fan, correct me if I'm wrong. And this is this is uh, uh, the like you say the adjustments that defensive coordinators are going to make now. It can be a little bit of a mirage with your quarterback sometimes, right? You can break out, and then the league's going to adjust to you, yeah, and always. then are you going to adjust back? It's sort of like a pitcher who makes the scene in MLB. The first time through the league, he can be dynamite, but then the second go around. Are, are the batters going to be able to adjust to his stuff or not, yeah, right? Now, now that I know what you do well, 
I'm going to take that away. That's why Fitzpatrick, Hoyer, et cetera, to some degree are mirage. At some point, their ceiling is lower and they're going to hit it. Well, you know, yeah, well, yes, yes. You, you know where the ceiling is and then teams, but you, you see a guy like Fitzpatrick. Now, why has Fitzpatrick been around so long? Because he understands what he can and can't do, and he's very efficient at what he can do. That's, what, that's what's been helping him up in New York the last season or so. Um, but with Dak, as you said, what, once we know what you can do, just think what Colin Kaepernick, mm-hmm. once the league knows what you can do, what else can you do? How do you adjust? How, how well can you perform the things that you are good at, even when I'm trying to take them away? Because that's what happens with every quarterback. That's what happens with Aaron Rodgers and Brady mm-hmm. and all these guys. You know what they're doing. They're just so doggone good at it that it still makes it difficult even when you know what they're doing. So with a young quarterback, th- this is what you have had success with. Not going to let you do it, especially in the playoffs. So, so that's what I'm saying. Back to the Romo thing. Do you put Romo out there if he hasn't extended his 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 playbook? There, that's the only reason you would possibly do it because you feel like you have a chance to win, but you're gonna need more than what he's doing. That's the only reason. If he continues to progress and you say I can see this, he may Romo may never get back out there. Boy, it is fascinating, and you know, in a practical uh, from a practical perspective, they're in the Romo for a lot of loot, not just through this year, but mm-hmm. through 2017. So to dump him and move on is easier said than done. Boy, my hair looks weird, Eric Davis. You noticing that? Well, I got a little. I'm glad the radio <laughs> listeners can't see it. It looks like I have a toupee on. Chris Law, what are we doing here? We're going to take a break. Yeah, let's catch a quick 60 second break. Uh, Jonah Carey's on hold. We're going to talk a little more MLB with him. And then if you're on hold, waiting to talk to Damashek at 844-204-RICH, we'll take some phone calls after that. Sound good? Look, you do everything. Eric Davis is going to move on then? Eric Davis is going to move on. So you can watch him on NFL Network. You can listen to him on the radio talk about the L.A. Rams. He does Uh all sorts of stuff. 710 ESPN in L.A. Eric Davis, great stuff as always. I look forward to seeing you in the hallways to pick your brain a little bit more. I like it. There you go. See you there. Great ED. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.